what I've done is I've created uh, an empty live project and I'm gonna show you how to throw DMX in as a plugin. I have my project here. First thing I'm gonna do, uh, by default a new project has returns set up, but in this one I deleted them just so I can show you if you're already using them for something, how to put a return track in. So I'm going to insert a return here. So I have my return track. I'm going to go into my plugins. I'm using a Mac, uh, and currently the audio units DMX's plugin does not work with the Mac. They're working on it. So I'm going to use the BST plugin DMX's. I'm just going to drag this over to the return. It'll take a second. There is the DMX's plugin. Uh, we can close this now temporarily. So I have my plugin here. Um, I have a demo bank. It's the, an empty bank. I'm not going to be doing any MIDI stuff uh, quite yet, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new preset. We'll name it. <laughs> we'll name it demo. How about? Uh, try that. There we go. Okay, so we have a demo preset. I'm going to go to the preset manager. Right now, everything's empty. Nothing set up at all. Uh, first thing you have to do, well, you, for what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, but in case you want to change banks and presets for this plugin, it's real simple. Um, you have to insert two MIDI tracks. Open up the sends real quick. So this MIDI track I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it DMX's Bank. And there's other tutorials on this. I'm just going through it in case uh, you missed it. I'm gonna call this DMX's Presets. So, first of all, uh, you want to send the MIDI on both of these to DMXs. The bank you want to send to channel 15. And the preset you want to send to channel 16. That way, you can create a MIDI event that will do your bank and preset changing. We're, we're not going to do that. I'll save that for a later tutorial. Right now, I want to be a little creative with just uh, showing you how to set up a fixture real quick in DMXs and do some interesting things with the sound tracker. First thing you want to do is figure out what uh, what your ID is on your device and right now I have my Chauvet color palette set to 65 uh, this guy just so I have different things on uh, different banks here so I can keep them straight so I'm going to select this fader I'm going to go to fixture library well if you notice I actually have fixtures set up um, that I've copied and pasted, made my own little folder so you can set up your custom fixtures, fixtures name them whatever you want. Um, I'm going to go to Chauvet here, go down. So see on the color palette there's a couple different ones. Um, three of these channels are general settings, the mode, the uh, the strobe, stuff like that. The other channels are RGB channels in groups of three. So the color palette has eight sections and depending on which one of these you can work with all the sections uh, individually or groups of sections. So I'm going to use the 15 channel. What that will give me is three utility faders and then that leaves 12 channels, which is 
four banks of the three RGB colors. So the first one you have the mode, the speed, the strobe, and then you start getting into your color groups. So this will divide the color palette into four different groups. Um, so I'm going to test it real quick. I'm just going to turn this. Um, it defaults to nothing. I'm going to pull this up to on. And we're going to look at the first group. Okay, that's red. Uh, it's a little bright for the camera. I'm going to move this a little so it's centered. That really is red, believe it or not. It's just really bright. Um, so yeah, that's working red green, blue, uh, actually let me turn up the room light a bit so the camera's not freaking out quite as much. Let's see, blue, that's better, that's a lot better. Okay, so that's one of the four sections because we've chosen the, the 15 DMX channels. And you'll notice uh, this section is offset a little, just a little, little to the side because it's different uh, quadrant on the panel. So we have uh, four different sections here. Uh, green. Okay, cool. Those are all working. <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the sound tracker I just came up with a, a general idea of something that I think might be pretty typical and that would be take a drum track uh, with say simple kick snare and hi-hat and say I want the the light to come on red every time we get a kick hit so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go here, I'm going to pull in a drum loop really quick. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me turn it up a little bit. Ah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to just pull that over. So I have our drum loop. Uh, play it again real quick so you can kind of see. So ideally, every time that kick hits, we want a red light to come on. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to take this puppy, oh, there's my send. So this is my audio send to return A. And what this puppy is going to do is it's going to take the audio from this track, and it's going to send it to the DMX channel. So if we play this, we look at our DMX, what we can do, select our red fader, and we're going to activate sound mode. So, right now I have the band set to sub. Notice if I move the band up to low, there's no bass guitar or anything going on, so it's working equally as well. Uh, but it actually works pretty good on sub. So this fader is moving according to what the kick's doing. Another thing we can do is pull the attack down so it happens really quick. It's right on the beat now. <clears throat> and let's go ahead. The, the level, notice if I, if I pull the level all the way down, I'm not getting any response. So if you got other stuff in the channel and you just want that kick, you can tweak this level setting so it's just recognizing the kick. 
And you can change the direction. I actually... I like what that's doing right there. So, so I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to go, okay. Um, that's only one of the quadrants. But uh, I want all of them to do that. So I'm going to double click on that. That's going to select all the red channels. I'm going to start my audio again. Now we're actually we're clicking all of those channels with the red. And that's pretty bright. You can see what it's doing. It's really freaking the camera out now. So, probably too bright for the camera. Good idea. Uh, a little too much though. So I'm going to go into those uh, and I'm going to actually pull that back off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different color in each quadrant. Oh, maybe them all. Yeah. So the first red's still set. Now I should be back to where we were. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's go to another quadrant and say I want the blue light. Now let's make it the green light. I want the green light to come on when the snare hits. So I'm going to do the same process. Uh, let me go again. I've selected the green fader on a different quadrant. And I'm going to pull the level up. Now it's following the kick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to the mid. So now I've got green going with the snare. And maybe you can watch the fader to see what's going on. It's still responding to the kick a little bit, so I'm going to pull the level down a little bit. That's a little better. No, it's a five this on high. It's picking up the high hat. So I'm going to pull this back to mid. Kind of wish there was a, a range on the frequency for these. There's probably a way uh, to change the script a bit to do that. But let's do one more thing. Let's go to our far bank. And I'm just going to pull up, let's see, that's white, and I want pink, how about yellow, let's, let's take these guys, these two, and make those sensitive to the hi-hat. down a little bit. That's ah, really bright. There we go. So now we got three different colors going. We got the red on the kick. Um, the green Actually, instead of green, let's throw that out. Let's make the snare blue. Oh, I'm going to pull that off, and I'm going to make the snare blue instead. There we go. That's a little better to see. So we got that running. It's pretty cool. Cool thing is once we get it set, we can go back in, drag, drag some other grooves in here. So we're using the
using the same preset. stuff. That's the uh, end of my first tutorial. Sorry it took so long to get through all that, but peace. Enjoy.